morning, this nice brisk morning um, from Marcel Township in Itasca County. So welcome. And um, as we go through the meeting today, we'll have folks just add in the chat where they're joining from today. We um, are excited to um, be able to feature Kelly Lake today, who is um, our sheriff um, in Carleton County. And I'm really excited to learn more from from Kelly, um, these meetings really are a result of 100 meetings we just completed, and Jasmine will talk a little bit more about that. But women really wanted to hear more about leadership journeys and what are these public offices and what do you do in these public offices? What's the job like? So a couple things as we get started here. I know people are joining, and um, please put in the chat where you're joining us from today. So um, a couple things, just want to remind people know where to vote. We're going to throw some voting resources in the chat. It's really important and um, make sure you get out there and you do your research on who's running and, and uh, make sure that you realize there's deadlines coming up with absentee ballots and, and um, being able to go and vote in person at your courthouse. So on that note, I want to welcome everybody. We are all about creating connections, inspiring leadership, and trying to figure out how we can help and support women um, to pursue more leadership decision-making roles. And that doesn't mean that everyone has to run for public office, but it does mean that maybe you know somebody that wants to run for public office, you know, a woman, and how, what can you do to support her? So the other thing about 100 Real Women is we're all about empowering young women. And today we're really fortunate, and I get to introduce um, our graduate student and undergraduate student. So this is um, Jasmine Terry, who is our graduate student at the University of Minneapolis, Minnesota, Minneapolis campus, and Lindsay Romling, who is our undergrad at the University of Minnesota Morris, and they are going to take us through the meeting, and let's get it going. Jasmine. Yeah, hello everyone. As Teresa has mentioned, I am Jasmine Terry. I am the graduate research assistant for 100 Rural Women. I started off as an intern in my undergrad career, graduated, got into grad school, and now I'm here as the graduate student. I just can't get enough of 100 Rural Women. So I'll let everyone know what 100 Rural Women is about and then what these meetings are about. So 100 Rural Women is a nonprofit and nonpartisan organization interested in providing resources to support and serve rural women. We envision a world where more rural women lead positive change for themselves, their families, communities, the nation, and the world. We aim to achieve this by identifying and creating relationships, networking, leadership, mentorship, and civic engagement. We just completed over 100 meetings across the state of Minnesota as part of our 100 in 100 project, where we learned from and listened to women. This resulted in over 3,000 requests for support. Building from that engagement and research, we are now in the process of creating and building a civic mentorship network with the end goal of engaging 100 rural elected women to mentor 100 rural women to pursue public service, and in addition, providing public service and voter education. This spring, we were also fortunate to work with three graduate students at the U of M Humphrey Schools on a capstone project called April 2022, The Barriers, Breakthroughs, and Backbone of Elected Rural Women. In this project, the graduate students conducted interviews with elected women and learned a lot from these interviews. We are now holding these informational slash educational meetings called Learn About It. So welcome to the beginning stages of our civic mentorship network. If anyone is interested or knows any women interested in public office and is looking for a mentor, we will be providing a survey after these sessions for you to fill out and indicate your interest. If you have any friends or, were un, or you know people that were unable to attend but are interested in learning more about these positions, we are recording these meetings and we'll post the video recording on our website. So let's get started. We'll first be introducing our speaker for today, and then you'll get to hear from her directly. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat throughout the meeting. Otherwise, we will be holding space towards the end of the session for any questions, and we, you may raise your hand during this time or just post them in the chat. If you don't feel comfortable saying these questions in front of everybody, you can direct message Lindsay. She is the intern, and then she will ask them for you. All right, today we have the opportunity to hear from the Sheriff of Carleton County, Kelly Lake. Kelly Lake is a lifetime resident of the area where she now raises her four children with her husband. 
After graduating from college, Kelly worked as a corrections officer in 1989, where she found her passion for law enforcement. From 1991 to 2003, Kelly continued to rise through the ranks, becoming a patrol, duty, patrol deputy and then a sergeant. In 2005, the sheriff of Carleton County retired and Kelly was appointed to serve as the sheriff for the remainder of this term. Following the conclusion of this term, Kelly ran for office and was elected as the first female sheriff in the county and the second ever female sheriff in the state of Minnesota. Kelly works diligently to serve the people of her community and strives to make a difference. Please give a warm welcome to Kelly Lake. Well, thank you all and, and good morning. Um, I'm very happy to be here and, and really honored that I was asked to speak. I think it's very important uh, what you are doing, at, you know, just to get women, rural women, just get women more involved. And I think that's really important and I'm, I'm happy to be part of that. So um, I, I think my bio said a lot of, in a little bit of what, <laughs> what my life has been like lately, but uh, I, there is a one little caveat there. I'm still not raising, I've kind of raised two of my children. They're actually out of the house now um, and, and doing quite well. One, uh, I just said, graduated from the, the University of Minnesota Twin Cities campus, and he's uh, already um, working in his field. And the other one is actually in his uh, graduate program. So I still have two at home. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, you have already done so much, especially empowering women and showing that you can be sheriff in a county. So kind of going into a couple questions 100 Rural Women has for you, and we'd love for you to answer. Our first question is, why did you run for office? So this was not really a path that I had uh, envisioned for myself. Um, I I was a patrol sergeant working for the sheriff's office at the time, and um, even at that point, I, I really hadn't been thinking, oh, I'm going to be sheriff uh, someday. Um, however, the opportunity presented itself to me when my um, sheriff and uh, our second in command, my, uh, the chief deputy, pulled me into their office one day um, and, and closed the door behind me. I had no idea what they wanted, but they said, we need to talk to you. So that right in and of itself is a little frightening. It's like being, you know, called to the principal's office or something. But um, after I talked with them, they, they, the sheriff said, well, I'm going to retire and I'd like to recommend you to take over as sheriff, but I wanted to talk to you about it. Um, so I, <laughs> I, I was a little taken aback, but, um, I think at that point in my career, I, I said, you know, I'm going to talk to my family about it because that's a big step to move to that that level. And, and it's a big commitment for families. So that's the other thing I think people kind of lose sight of. It's, you know, it, it's a lot for the elected, but the family lives that life, too. Um, so anyway, I did talk at that time. Um, we I talked to my husband. Um, we had two kids at the time that were young and uh decided, yeah, let's, let's go for it. I really thought, um, you know, Carlton County is my home. And I thought I could really make a difference in, in the position of sheriff. I, you know, I had made my whole career here at the sheriff's office already, but I thought I can really make a difference. So um, I decided I wanted to do it. And at that point, uh, I was appointed by the county board. So there's a, there's a law that says they can appoint uh, a sheriff if, if there's a vacancy midterm. Um, and then um, I, I was in that position for probably 18, almost 18 months as, as sheriff um, appointed. Um, and then uh, decided, yep, this is really what I wanna do. And it is an elected position, which um, is, you know, a little unique. Some people think, you know, with law enforcement being an elected position, but, um, I truly believe it's very important that the office of sheriff is elected. Um, I think it gives the people a chance, you know, to to have a say in, you know, who who is in that office um, because their public safety, their community safety, is very critically important, and they have a say in that. So, um, it, it kind of the rest is history from from that point. So I I had my first campaign, and I did have opposition the first time. Um, back in uh, 05, um, when I was elected for the 06. Um, so 
that's kind of how I got my start. Cool. Well, I, I'm really glad that you decided to take the position. I'm sure a lot of other people on this call are really glad that you decided to take the position. So when we are talking about the position, what do you do in this office? And like, what does an average day look like for you? Yeah, I would like to say av there is an average day. Unfortunately, there really is never an average day because um, you just don't know what it is going to, to be. But um, the Office of Sheriff, I, there's a lot of statutory duties that I have at, um, you know, that fall under the purview of the Office of Sheriff. Um, so within my office, I, I oversee the, the patrol division, which is, you know, the, the deputies that all of you, you know, probably see out in the public more. Um, but the patrol division are investigators. Um, the sheriff also has uh, court security. So if you go into your local courthouse, um, you know, we, we are responsible for courthouse security. Um, also, I have uh, under my purview the county jail which if there's any uh, arrests that are made within the county and it doesn't matter what law enforcement agency makes that arrest, it could be a police department, um, you know, it could be the sheriff's office, could be the Minnesota State Patrol. They are housed at the Carleton County Jail, which um, I oversee the jail and also our 911 dispatch center. So anybody that calls into 911 um, that reaches our dispatch center, um, and we also dispatch for all fire, law enforcement, and emergency medical services within Carlton County. So that is under my purview as well. And also uh, the uh, emergency management director. So um, if there's any natural disasters, you know, we had a, a, a 500 year flood back in 2012 in this uh, region um, and that uh, uh, emergency management falls under me as well. Um, so, you know, trying to respond to, to those natural disasters and, and things like that. So, um, in fact, my emergency management director currently is, is deployed with the, the Minnesota All Hazards Management Team in Florida right now. So they're assisting and supporting those efforts right now. So um, there's kind of a, a lot that falls under that purview. Um, also, um, civil process. And, and some of those, uh, a lot of those are not uh, duties that would fall, say, to a police chief. It is it is only duties that fall to the sheriff. So um, I guess that in a nutshell is kind of what it, it, I am responsible for. So, you know, what do I do in a day? I, of course, have great people that I work with um, in each of those divisions that, you know, certainly <laughs> make things run a lot smoother. But um, when I started in patrol, obviously I'm out taking calls for service and doing things like that. Uh, in this position, certainly there's more meetings um, because, you know, obviously one of my biggest jobs in addition to overseeing that, but is to make sure that my staff have all of the tools and the resources and the training that is necessary to effectively do their jobs out in the community and, and serve the people that we serve in our communities. So that's that's one of the biggest things. So it varies. I, I usually the best laid plans, I have a nice list. I'm a list person. And if I get one thing done on my list that I thought I was gonna get done, I'm I'm usually doing pretty good because you know things happen in our world. Uh, and when that happens, you drop everything and you kind of pivot and it just depends what's going on at, at that moment. So Wow, you do a lot. <laughs> well, thinking about all the stuff you do, what are the benefits of being county sheriff? So, like I said, it's uh, to me, it's really an honor to have this position, and I think it's very important to have it as an elected position. Um, there are most of the offices of sheriff throughout the United States are elected. Um, Minnesota is a nonpartisan, which I'm very glad for, and I think it should be nonpartisan. Uh, there are some states where the sheriff is is not. Uh, it is it is a partisan office, but in Minnesota, it is nonpartisan, which I think it should be um, because we're here to protect and serve everyone, no matter their political affiliations. So um, I think that is important, and it it gives the again, like I said before, it gives the people in our county, the voters, an opportunity to have a say in who is running their office of sheriff, because there's some very important 
you know, public safety aspects to this. Um, and it isn't always all, all about the public safety, you know, um, we also have a lot of uh, play a part in the education, um, interacting with our communities, with our, whether it's, you know, the children all the way up to the seniors. Um, so it, uh, it, it is important to me and I, I hope that it, it continues to be an elected office. And I take that very seriously um, because I take an oath you know, and, and it is important. And, and I, I would love to see more women get into it. Um, currently, I am the only female sheriff in Minnesota. Um, at one point, there was three of us. Um, but now we're back down to me, the other two retired. Um, there's a couple that are on the ballot now come November. So um, I think we might see a, a little bit of a change here. Um, but we'll see. That's amazing. Um, now we're gonna open up the floor to questions. So if anyone has a question, please raise your hand or ask it in the chat or yeah, I will ask the first question. And being the first women in your county to be elected as sheriff, uh, did you have any pushback from the community? And also have you had any like people trying to make the bipartisan, more partisan part, I guess, if that makes sense. So first part of the question, um, no, I did not have pushback. I mean, I had um, a ton of support within my office, you know, from, from, from the staff members and the community and our county board. It was a unanimous uh, vote where they appointed me. Um, but you, I, you have to remember, I was born and raised in this county, but I had also been deputy, um, you know, patrolling um, for several years prior to that. So I was out in the community a lot. So I, I got to know a lot of people through that. Um, so I think that's, you know, where a lot of that support came from is they knew me um, and they knew what kind of person I was and what kind of work I did. Um, and so I did not have pushback. It was... Uh, and, the, and then the election um, showed that because there was overwhelming support when I was elected um, as far as the percentage of vote that I received compared to my opponent that election. So, And then the second part was you asked about the partisan, nonpartisan. Um, no, I really haven't received that. I think... Um, You know, certainly there are, are each political party, people's views, you know, they have different views, but I've not ever experienced it where they're trying to, you know, push the sheriff into, you know, that should be this political affiliation or that political affiliation. Um, I, I have not experienced that myself. So I've been very fortunate um, as far as the support too. Um, that that I've received. So I have not felt that pushback either. That's awesome to hear. Um, we have a question from Beth. Good morning. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your story. I'm just wondering for someone who uh, is just starting out or wanting to get on the path of um, running for sheriff, what are the steps that you would recommend or the advice you'd give to them to, to prepare and to um, start that path? Well, for the office of sheriff, you have to be a, um, you have to have a, or be eligible to be licensed. We have uh, Minnesota P Peace Officer Standards and Training. It's our licensing board for, for uh, police officers in Minnesota. So it, you have to have that. I know in some other states, you do not even have to be a police officer in order to become sheriff, but that is a minimum requirement that I, ha I have to have. Um, in fact, in order to file, I have to have that license. Um, it isn't even eligible to be licensed at that. It, you have to have that to file. So that's the first thing. Um, but as far as the rest of it, you know, again, I, I talked about the different aspects that the sheriff is responsible for. Um, so making sure that, you know, you're, you're well versed in those different aspects and and understand at least get an understanding i'm not saying you have to have done all of that but at least have a very good understanding of what falls under your response you know area of responsibility um 
And then, you know, the, one of the favorite parts of my job is interacting with the community and interacting with people. So um, that is obviously very important. Um, you know, it's a very public facing office. Um, you know, if you're, if you're doing it as you should be doing it. So, um, just getting out there and making sure you're talking with people, um, and understanding the job and, and understanding what the needs of your community and what your community is, is looking for in their sheriff. That all has to happen before you can even, you know, think that you're going to, you know, take this position. That's amazing. There is another question in the chat, and that is, what would some of the positive benefits be of having more women as sheriff and law enforcement across the board? So, um, obviously, there, you know, we're, there are not as many women in law enforcement that we would like to see. Um, there are far more than there used to be, uh, but that percentage still remains um, lower than we would want it. Uh, but, you know, there are many benefits to that, uh, just because that's who we serve. I mean, you you like to have the office, you know, your elected office is representative of the communities that you serve. Um, so it would be nice to get more females in there. But just when we respond out in the communities, uh, you know, on our calls for service, um, whether, you know, whatever it might be, um, Men and women just have different ways of handling things, good, bad, or otherwise. Um, but you know, sometimes you know, for example, in if if there's children involved, or you know, women have different communication styles, and sometimes we can uh, work to diffuse things. You know, not all the time, because believe me, I've seen it both ways. Um, but we just have different skill sets that can complement you know, the skill set that the men have. So it would be nice to, to, to have that both perspectives and our perspectives are different. So to be able to have that, I think uh, just, it gives a more well-rounded um, response to the communities. So I think it is important. And as far as in leadership roles, same thing holds true for that. We just have different communication styles um, and different perspectives. And I think to be able to have varying perspectives is important. That's great. I do too. We have both male and female officers, public safety officers on campus, and I think it has really benefited everyone here. Yeah. Um, here's another question. Can you talk more about the impacts for your family and children? Like what are the positives and negatives? Sure. Well, <laughs> depends which one of my kids you ask. If you ask the teenagers, they, no, they're they're very good kids, but they they know that somebody is always watching them because <laughs> I tell them that, like the, all the deputies know you, so they know who you are, and so you can't get into any trouble because they're going to be watching you. Um, but it is like I mentioned before, you know, and that is one thing in the, in an elected office. It isn't just the elected; um, it is a family. It, it is it will be a family thing because you end up you know doing a lot of uh attending a lot of activities or events um and i like to involve my family in in a lot of that in the community aspect of it um but they also need to know that uh you know there are times when you know i, I tell them my daughter might have a volleyball game for example and i say i'm sorry but i have a work commitment and I, you know, my, my kids are my priority, but you have to balance that because there are times where something is going to trump that at work. You know, it, it's, it, it just is. Um, so just to have them have that understanding of that, I think helps a lot. And they are, do they like it all the time? No. Um, but they've also learned to become pretty self-sufficient sometimes. Um, it's a little harder when they're younger, although they don't understand all the time. Um, so to have that support system, I was very fortunate. Um, but, you know, both me and my husband, our families are from Carlton County as well. So we had grandmas and grandpas and aunts, you know, and uncles uh, to be able to help um, watch our kids or to, to babysit if, if we needed that. And, and then it, it took a lot lot of stress off me knowing that my kids and and are are taken care of and I don't have to worry about them um you know when I am at work or or needing to um 
get pulled away from something. Um, I'm not going to lie. There's still that that mom guilt that settles in a little bit, but um, to have that support system is critically important um, around you. Um, and I know a lot of people are not fortunate to have that, but it it does help tremendously. And I don't think I could do it without that to be able to to have that uh, family and and work life balance. So. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. We really appreciate it. We are running low on time, so we are going to end our Q&A session. Um, just to close up, is there any important advice you'd like to give prospective women that want to seek public office or like you want to talk about the importance of mentorship, either one or both? Yeah, no, I think the mentorship is hugely important. I know when I, you know, first became sheriff, I was like, oh my gosh, I, this is a whole new world. This is different. I had never done this, but we have. Um, so I would recommend, you know, tying into the professional associations that are available. You know, we had the Minnesota Sheriff's Association, um, which uh, ha has been a huge support and just a huge network of 86 other sheriffs you know, that I could call upon and say, okay, you've been doing this for years already. You know, I know you've been through this, or maybe you have, what can I do? So to reach out for that help is, is hugely important and, and, and talk to other, other people that are in the elected positions um, that can help you through this because you don't have to do it alone. Thank you so much for all the words of wisdom you've given us and all the important information. We really appreciate it. And we're glad you took time out of your day to come here. I'm going to turn over the remaining of the time to Teresa so she can tell everyone how to stay connected with 100 Row Women. Thank Wonderful. you so much. I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, if anybody has any questions they didn't want to ask on the chat, uh, anybody can get a hold of me here at the Sheriff's Office anytime. I'd be happy to to answer any questions or just talk through things. So thank you. I love it. Thank, thanks so much, Kelly. And um, we did put in the chat information about Carleton County. So those resources there, and we'll share those after the, after the meeting. But thanks so much for joining today. And it's just been a pleasure for us to learn more about the Office of the Sheriff and other elected offices. Um, so I've gotten, of course, this always happens. Um, I've gotten texts and emails during the thing of like, when is this going to, when's the recording going to be released? Because my schedule didn't work. But that's what we're trying to do is do meetings at different times to try and catch um, um, folks at, with their busy schedules. So we will, as I said, be sharing this on our website. Um, we're also putting in the chat also that remember to vote. I want to remind people of that again. Um, we have November 8th as our election. So um, there's great information out on our Secretary of State's office and vote 411. And to connect with 100 Rural Women, we have a lot of programming. We have the Civic Mentorship Network, which we just launched, and we're really excited about that. But we also have book groups, webinars, um, and then we also feature women in Ask a Leading Women and Spotlight Leadership Profiles. So join any of our events. We've got events, uh, a great events calendar on our website, and we have a lot of programming, and we're just excited to be able to have the honor to lift up incredible women like you, Kelly. So thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day, and um, thanks for attending today. <laughs>